for a part-time student, the cost of college tuition is a function of the number of hours for which the student is registered. Write an equation to represent the tuition cost, C, if the cost per hour is $94.50, H represents the number of hours taken for the current semester. The cost is going to equal $94.50 times H. If you work, if you only take one hour, you got to pay ninety-four fifty. Two hours, then you take two times ninety-four fifty. One eighty-nine, I think, and so on. So you multiply H times ninety-four fifty, and that gives you the cost. Use F of H to represent the cost, and rewrite the equation in part A in function notation. F of H is 94.50 times h. Complete the table. So if h is 2, if h is 4, if h is 7, if h is 8, or if h is 11. I'm going to go to the calculator here and uh, actually I'm going to make it a function y equals 9.450 times x then I'm going to go to table make sure my table set is set up to ask and then I'm going to go to table I'm just going to plug in a whole bunch of values that they want first up they want when x is 2 $189 dollars when x is 4 it'll be double that $378 dollars 7 661 dollars and 50 cents 8 and 11. So those are the answers that go in the chart there. Let me actually just take a screenshot of this and paste it. Okay. So these are the answers that go for uh, part C. The input is the H, the number of hours, and then the output is C, or the cost of the college tuition. Plot the ordered pairs on an appropriately scaled labeled and coordinate system. Labeled and labeled coordinate system. Okay. Scaled and labeled. Well, the X is going to be how many hours? And we have it all the way up to 11. And I guess there's 11 squares there. So let's go ahead and make this. The Y axis. This other guy here, the x-axis. Okay, now, so going across, we'll label them by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Each of those lines there. Now going up, we need to scale appropriately. The largest y value is a thousand. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, we can go by, uh, we do have 20 blocks. Um, let's go by, f by 50s. Every other one is 100. So this is going to be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and so on. I actually have to go off the graph. That's okay, though. 900 and 1,000. So that um, they want us to plot the ordered pairs. So when you're at 2, you're at 189. So that's somewhere right about here, close to 200. 
two, you're at 189. When you're at four, you're at 378. Almost there. Sounds good. When you're at seven, you're at 661. 661. That's like 650. Plus a little bit. So, like right about there. When you're at 8, you're at 756. Right about there. And when you're at 11, you're off the grid here. Right about there. Plot the ordered pairs on an appropriately scaled and labeled coordinate system. So H is the hours labeled and then um, C is the cost in dollars. Okay, great. Explain from the graph how you know that F is a function. Um, it's, uh, it's linear. It's a line. It's linear. Uh, for every input H, you'll only have one output C. For every hour that you plug in, only one output's going to come out. And that's the definition of a function. Every input can have one and only one output, only one cost. C will uh, will come out, and uh, if we were to connect the dots, uh, it passes the vertical line test. Okay, that's enough. Every vertical line should touch once and only once. I don't think they want us to connect the dots. They just said plot the ordered pairs, so we're good then. So that is number three. Great. Uh, let's go on to the next question. Number four. Okay, great. So we have uh, this function, y equals negative x minus 1. Construct a table of five ordered pairs that satisfy this equation. So we're going to have our x, we're going to have our y. y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. Pick a x and figure out the y. So let's do both positive and negative. So let's choose something like negative 3 negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. So we're going to plug these x values in. Negative 2 times negative 3 minus 1. That's a positive 6. Take away 1, you get a 5 out. Negative 2 times negative 1. Take away 1. That's a positive 2. But when you take away 1, you get a 1 out. Plug it in 0 is nice. It just kills this term, and you get a negative 1 out. When you plug a 1 in for x, this now is a negative 2. When you take away 1, you get a negative 3. And then when you plug a 3 in, this is now a negative 6. When you take away 1, it's a negative 7. So we just constructed a table of five ordered pairs that satisfy the equation. Negative 3, 5 is 1. Negative 1, 1. 0, negative 1. 1, negative 3. 3, negative 7. Five order pairs. What's the slope of the line represented by the equation? When you're in this form, y equals mx plus b, the slope is the number that is multiplied by x. For us, that's a negative 2. It tells you the rise over the run. It tells you how much the line rises 
divided by how much it runs. It's the steepness of the line. What is the y-intercept? If you're in that form, y equals mx plus b, the y-intercept is when x is 0. And so if you set x equal to 0, you get that y is equal to b. In our line, it's negative 2x minus 1, so the y-intercept is y equals negative 1. The x-intercept is where y equals 0. In our line, if we said y equal to 0, we then have to solve for x. So we can add this 1 over to the other side and have 1 is equal to negative 2x and divide by negative 2 to get that x is equal to negative 1 half. So those are the two places where you hit the axes. This is where you hit the y-axis and this is where you hit the x-axis. This is a point, 0, negative 1, and this is another point, negative 1, half, 0. Is the function increasing, decreasing, or constant? When you have a line with a negative slope, that means it's decreasing. Because as you move from left to right, as x's get larger, y's get smaller. If you just look at our chart, we can see that as the x's got larger, the y's got smaller. So that's a decreasing function. As x increases, y decreases. So that's our explanation as to how we get the fact that it's a decreasing function. All right, great.